Yeah. So we will have uh, the concept of uh, elasticities of demand. Okay. Let's look at uh, the elasticities of demand now in detail. Elasticity of demand. We already said that there is a there is a negative relationship that exists between price and the quantity demanded in the law of price. But uh, we didn't say what happens when you increase price by this margin, how much does the quantity decrease? Okay, or when we reduce the price by this margin, how much does the, the quantity reduce? So when you want to examine the magnitudes, then we can use the concept of elasticities of demand. Is that clear? Okay. So Mr. Stanley, you'll be our respondent for today. That, that should be fair. Yeah. So that I can be getting some sound. Is that okay? Hello? It is okay, sir. All right. Let me just uh, share the screen. Yes, so I was, I was saying that uh, the, the elasticities of demand actually now measures, it measures the responsiveness, all right? The responsiveness the responsiveness of of quantity demanded uh, to change in any factor any factor affecting affecting demand all right the responsiveness the responsiveness of the quantity demanded to changes in any factor affecting demand is what is called the elasticities of demand. So what we are saying is that the quantity demanded actually responds to some changes in a, to some changes in factors that affect the demand. So now um, that response, okay, is what is called the, the elasticity of demand. It's basically the response. So if you do increase, for example, if you increase, for example, if there is a change in price, the price of the commodity, then you will have what is known as the, the price elasticity of demand. The price elasticity of demand. The price elasticity of demand, or to be specific, the on price, the on price elasticity of demand, it is actually the responsiveness in the quantity demanded because of the change, because of the change in quantity, because of the, the, the change in the price of the good, right? That is called the on price elasticity of demand. When the, the price of the commodity changes, then the quantity demanded of that commodity responds now. If he, the quantity demanded has responded because of the change in price, that is called the on price elasticity of demand. Then he, if uh, the quantity demanded has responded to changes in income, then you have what is known as the income elasticity of demand. Income elasticity of demand, all right? Then again, if uh, the quantity demanded is responding to changes in the price sales of the related goods, then you have what is known as the cross, the cross price elasticity of demand, cross price elasticity of demand. So basically, these are the three main types of what elasticities that I'm of demand I'm talking about. There is on price elasticity of demand, which is caused by the changes in the price of the particular commodity. And there is income elasticity of demand caused by the changes in the income of the commodity and the cost 
price elasticity of demand that is basically caused by the changes in the prices of the related what, goods. Is that clear? Hello? It's clear, sir. All right. If that is clear, then we can now move on. So this is what I am just from saying. So I did say that the elasticity of demand actually is the degree of responsiveness of quantity demanded of a good to a change in price or the change in income or the change in price of the related goods, okay? That is what usually happens. And the, when these factors change, they produce what is called the on price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, and the cross elasticity of demand, the cross price. We can start with the price elasticity of demand. So with the price elasticity of demand, it is actually now the degree of the responsiveness of the demand to changes in the price of the commodity. When the price of the commodity changes, then you will find that uh, the quantity demanded will, will change, right, will respond. So that responsiveness or that percentage change in a quantity demanded as a result of the percentage change in price, you have what is known as the, the, the price elasticity of demand. So there are basically two types of elasticities of demand, uh, uh, on price elasticities of demand. Number one, there is what is called the point elasticity of demand. Point elasticity, elasticity of demand, All right? Point elasticity of demand. This one actually just measures the responsiveness. Very, right. very, the screen cannot be shown, sir. You can't see the screen? Is no. that the same with the F1? You can't see the screen? Can anyone confirm? I can see. Yes, I think, sir, you can just log out and log in again. Price. Then you have point A. The price has reduced to P1. You have point B. There is so quantity, quantity not, and the quantity one. Right now, point elasticity of demand simply indicates the examination of the elasticity of demand at one point along the demand curve, right? So we want to ask ourselves, what is the, the responsiveness, the elasticity of demand at point A? Meaning when the price is at P naught and the quantity is at Q naught, what is that responsiveness, right? That is called the, the point elasticity of demand. And the formula that we use to find the point elasticity of demand is given as the on price elasticity of demand equal to the change in the quantity of the commodity as a result of the change in the price, right? Times the, the price one over the Q one. You can represent this as the the change in the quantity can be represented as Q2 minus Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 multiplied by P1 over Q1. This is the formula that you use when you are doing point elasticity of demand. Of course, all the time you do that, your answer shall be negative right? Your answer shall be negative. Then you will have to pre-multiply your answer by negative one. Why should the answer be negative always? Because of the negative relationship that exists between price and the quantity demanded. So you'll be basically given uh, the two points. For example, you say when the price moved from five quarter to 10 quarter, then the quantity moved from 15 units to 25 what, units, okay? So 25 units shall be your Q2. This one, 15 units, the previous units shall be Q1. And the P2 shall be the next unit, the next price. And the P1 
shall be the previous price. Any question? We'll do examples. It will be fine. We'll do examples. So that is what is actually there. So that is the formula that you use when you're finding the point elasticity of demand. You're just measuring the elasticity at one point along the demand curve. There's also what is known as the ag price elasticity of demand. Yeah. So we have also what is known as the, the arc elasticity of demand. Now with the arc elasticity of demand, the formula is given as follow. So it is actually the arc elasticity of demand. So arc elasticity of demand to start with, it measures the elasticity of demand um, along the two points, okay? I already gave you along the two point, between two points along the demand curve, you have two prices, let's say P1, uh, P2 here, giving us the quantity one and the quantity two. We have two points, point A, point B. When you want to examine the elasticity between A and B, in between, between the two points, you use what is called the arc elasticity of demand, not the point. The point one is used to examine the elasticity at one point, but this one is for between two points, okay? And so the formula is given as follow. This is the formula that you, you, you have uh, that can help you to find uh, the arc elasticity of demand. And so the formula is given as the elasticity of demand is equal to the change in a quantity over the change in what? In a price times the P1 price P2 divided by Q1 plus Q2, right? Whereas you can see, represent the, Q, the, the change in quantity as the Q2 minus Q1 over P2 minus P1, right? You make one figure here. Um, you can make one here, extend the line. Then you can also add P1 plus e, P2 over uh, Q1 plus e, Q2. You do like that. So this is the, the formula that you can use to find the arc elasticity of demand. It is basically the same, okay? It is basically the same. So what we are saying is that Q2 is actually the new quantity, all right? Q1 is the old quantity. P1 is the old quantity, and P2 is the, the new quantity as well. So nothing much. When you just use the, this formula, it means you are examining the elasticity of demand between the two points, between point A and point B. It is called the arc elasticity of demand. Very important to get the formula. Extremely important, I repeat, to get the formula. Any question? We'll, we'll do the examples. Okay, we will do the examples first, first. Now, when you calculate the elasticity of demand, you can have the, uh, the different answers, okay? You can have different answers. Your answers can be ranging between the range of negative, negative answers, okay? You can also have one, you can have answers that are greater than one, okay? Just like that. What does that mean? If your elasticity of demand, for example, it is greater than one. If your answer is maybe 1.2, 1.34, okay, once it is greater than one, that means that demand is said to be elastic and the product is a luxury good. I'll repeat, if you calculate, we find that your answer 
which is actually the, the elasticity of demand is greater than one, the coefficient is greater than one, just know that the demand is said to be elastic demand, all right? The demand is elastic. To be elastic it simply means to be responsive, like to respond so much to changes in what? In prices. It means that for that particular product, for example, the luxury goods, should you just change the price by only one unit, you will see a lot of change in the quantity demanded, right? For such products where the demand is elastic, if you increase the price by only one quarter, for example, you see a lot of units changing, or you see a, a, a reduction in what? In the quantity demanded. And similarly, if you reduce the price by only maybe one quarter or two quarter, but, still, but just by small unit or small percentage, you will see a larger percentage change in quantity uh, demanded. Is that clear? And now, if, we, if the absolute, if the absolute elasticity of demand is between zero and one, if you find that your answer is not equal to zero and is not equal to one, but it is just in between, between zero and one, it means that the demand is inelastic, okay? The demand is said to be inelastic. Now, the word inelastic simply means not responsive, okay? And the product is said to be a necessity, a necessity good, okay? So it means that the demand is less what? Less, less responsive to price changes, which simply means when you are dealing with such products which are necessities, even if you change the price, usually people don't respond too much to price changes for necessary goods. We can give an example, examples of medicines, right? Examples of medicines. You see that even if you increase the, the prices of the medicines, you will see people not responding much to price changes in medicines, okay? That is what usually happens. Now, if elasticity of demand is equal to one, that means that demand is said to be unitary elastic, okay? Unitary elastic, which simply means if you change the price by 50%, even if the quantity demanded changes by, 50%. Again, if elasticity of demand is equal to zero, the demand is said to be perfectly inelastic, which simply means when, it, when, it, when the demand is perfectly in, inelastic, it means that even if you change the price, the quantity demanded does not change. That is what it means. Okay, when you calculate the absolute value, which is supposed to be positive all the time, of elasticity of demand, you find that the answer is zero. Just know that for that product, even if you change the price, then the quantity does not usually change. What example of the good can you give us that exists that, whose demand is inelastic? Any example? Practical example. Even if you change the price, the quantity does not change. People will still buy the same quantity. Hello? We are asking the class. Sword. <coughs> sword, sword, okay. Yeah, sword. You find that whether you increase the sword, the price of sword or what, people still take the same amount of sword uh, or fuel, okay? Whether you increase the price or not, people still consume the same amount of fuel for them to take the same journeys, right? Same distances. If the absolute value or coefficient of the elasticity of demand is perfectly elastic, just uh, is infinite. If it is equal to infinite, it said that the demand is said to be perfectly elastic. It simply means should you just change the price only by one unit, you, 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 the quantity demanded changes by more than 50%. For example, you just increase the price of a good only by one quarter, you see the, you can even notice the decline in the sales. People stop coming just because of the increase in one quarter. So you can see that is said to be, the, the product 
is said to have the demand which is perfectly elastic. There are basically some factors affecting the price elasticity of demand. All right, those factors that affect the coefficient of the elasticity of demand. And they include the following. Number one, the availability of substitute goods. The availability of substitute goods is actually one of the factors or the determinant of the price elasticity of demand. These are not determinants of demand. We are talking about the determinants of the price elasticity of demand. So you find that the more the substitutes are available for a product, then the more the elastic will be, okay? The more elastic the product will be. People will, will respond to changes to price when they have got the substitutes. If they have what to replace the product with, should we just increase by two quarters? You find that they will say, ah, no, go and buy this one, which is cheaper. But if there, there are no available substitutes, you can't find any substitutes available. What usually happens is that the, the demand, okay, the elasticity of demand remains unaffected. It tends to be inelastic, okay? Because people can't replace that product with any other product. The time also is said to be one of the determinants of the elasticity of demand, the price elasticity, of course. It is said that in the long run, the price elasticity of demand tends to be elastic. This is because more substitute goods will come to the market. They will be produced as time passes. As a result, people will start responding to changes. Or people tend to start adjusting to their consumption pattern in the long run as the time goes on. You see that when the product is just newly introduced on the market, people do not respond much to price to changes in price. Okay. But should it just stay for a long time on the market? Like people are aware of it, it's not even a new product, it's out of fashion. People will start changing to price, they will start responding to price changes. They will, they will start reducing the quantities. For example, you say, ah, no, this product is out of fashion. Why is it expensive? You know those things. Once the product, most of the times you find that the product when it is still newly introduced, because the producers understand this concept, the price is usually up, but as it stays, on the market, the prices start coming down bit by bit because people have started responding to changes in price. The proportion of income consumers spend for a product is also another determinant of price elasticity of demand. The smaller the proportion of income spent on a good, the less price elastic will be the commodity. The commodity will be so you find that if consumers just spend a smaller amount of their income on that uh, particular commodity, then people will not respond much to changes in the prices of that commodity. But if that commodity takes a lot of the proportion of their income, percentage of their income, people will start responding to price changes of that commodity. Okay. How important the commodity is in the consumer's budget will also determine the determinant, will also determine the price elasticity of demand. So you find that luxury goods tend to be more elastic. People respond much to changes in the luxury good, in the prices of the luxury goods, because they're less important. But when you talk about the necessity goods, people, these uh, tend to be less elastic. For example, salt. People do not respond highly to changes in the prices of salt or of such commodities which are necessity goods. So that is actually basically what happens. Any question? There is no question, sir. You can proceed. Income elasticity of demand now. This one actually now just measures the responsiveness of the demand to changes in what? In income. So I just measuring the changes, pay attention, 
This one, you are measuring the changes in quantity demanded as a result of the changes in income, right? Income one over quantity one, like that. This is the income elasticity of demand. Where change in quantity can be represented as Q2 minus C, Q1 over I1 income one minus income two times the income one over quantity one. This is the formula that you use when you're finding the income elasticity of demand. Where Q2 is the new quantity and Q1 is the old quantity, I1, oh, I1 is the new quantity and the I2, I1, I2 is the new quantity, I1 is the old quantity. Uh, is the, is the odd income, sorry. I2 is the new income and the I1 is the, the odd income. Yeah, so that's what happens. So you just compute those figures into the formula then you have the income elasticity of demand. Now, when you look at the income elasticity of demand, you can find the different answers. It is possible to find the answer that is greater than one. Should you just find the answer that is greater than one? Just know that the good is a luxury good, okay? If your answer you find is greater than positive one, just know that the good you're dealing with is a luxury good. If you find that the elasticity of demand is less than one, but positive, which means it's between zero and one, the good is said to be necessity good. That's how we interpret the income elasticity of demand coefficients. If the elasticity of demand is less than one, but positive, just know that the good is a necessity good. But if elasticity of demand is less than zero, meaning it is negative, right? It means that the good is an inferior good. Now for inferior goods, it simply means those goods whose quantity you reduce, okay, whose consumption, you reduce as your income increases. So as your income increases, you reduce the consumption of some commodities, right? Some goods. Those goods are said to be inferior goods. You just consume them because you don't have enough cash. You don't have enough income. If your income increases, then you change. You stop or you reduce the consumption of such goods. Can someone give me an example of an inferior good? Anyone? Any practical example of an inferior good in real life? So yeah, thanks, sir. So yeah, thanks, I think. So you find that when the, the inferior goods, uh, what happens is that when people have money, when people have gotten paid, they don't like buying soya chunks, right? Some people don't like. They just take them because they are stuck. <laughs> because they are stuck. When things are fine, they cannot uh, take that. All right. Let me comment on the cross price elasticity of demand. Now the cross price elasticity of demand, this one actually measures how much the demand for a product is affected by a change in the price of a related good, okay? Of a related good. And the formula is given as follows. So it is actually the change in a good X minus C. So let's say good X, C, Q2 of good X2 and the Q1 minus Q1 of good X divided by P2 of good Y minus C, P1 of good U y times p1 of good y divided by q1 of good x. Yeah, so that is what happens. This is the formula. So you have got two goods, right? You have got two goods which are related. For example, I gave you an example of bullet and boom, all right? Bullet and boom. So as we give you an example of bullet and boom, what happens is that 
for example, if you increase the price of bullet, you, you, you are selling boom, okay? Then those people who are selling bullet, bullet they increase the price from P1 to P2. What will happen is that the quantities of the, uh, the, the, the product you are selling yourself will, will change from Q1 to Q2. So the product that you are dealing with, the one that you are selling yourself is called the QX. For example, let's say QX, X is boom. That's the one you are selling. Then bullet is the, is the Y, good Y, a bullet. So if those guys who are selling bullet reduce their price, you see that the quantities of boom will reduce from Q, from Q2, okay? From Q1 to Q2, like it will change, all right? So, and again, if uh, the opposite happens, you see the opposite change. So what happens is that the changes in the price of this related good affects the quantity of the other good. So the formula is actually this one that measures the cross price elasticity of demand. It measures the cross price elasticity, elasticity of demand. Now, as you calculate, as you compute, you put numbers into this formula. What happens is that the answers can be of the following nature. You can have the elasticity of demand, which is positive, okay? The cross price elasticity of demand, which is positive. If your answer is positive, it means that the price elasticity of demand for a good is a substitute good. Like the goods that you're dealing with, they are substitute goods, if the answer is positive. And again, if your answer is negative, it means that the goods that you're dealing with are complement goods. So the signs here, the signs, they have something to say. They, they mean something, all right? So if you find that the answer is negative, it means that the goods, the goods in question are complementary goods. But you find that the answer is zero. Just know that the two goods are not related, okay? They are not related in one way or the, or the other. So this time around, I ask you for any question. Okay. Let me do this. Let me let me show you now the let me let me get a question. Just one question. Let me get the question so that we, we try out some questions, then you will be fine. Just to basically cement your understanding a bit. Then you will be fine. Okay. Are you able to see the screen that I'm sharing now? Yes, sir. Yes. So this was one of some tests that some people wrote. So here is, here is the question, question number one. You are given the period of time, first month and second month, right? Then you're also given the quantities the quantity of bullet and the, quant the prices of boom. Okay, quantities of bullet and the prices of what? Of boom per box. The question is, calculate the elasticity of demand of bullet from first month to the second month. Check that there are two related goods here. We have boom and bullet. So it means that the, the, the good in question is a bullet. That's a good that you are selling. So if the price of boom, which is a related good, changes from 25 to 30, then the quantity of bullet that you are selling will change from 200 to 250, right? Calculate the elasticity of demand. What type of elasticity is this one? Is it income elasticity, cross elasticity, or price elasticity? On price, of course. What type of elasticity of demand is this? It's cross elasticity. It is cross elasticity of demand because we're dealing with it. 
two different commodities. So let, it, let us just um, solve the question. Let's solve the question. This is it. So the changes in the quantities of the two goods. So from one point to another point. So the higher point, the changes in the quantity of bullet, it was from 250 minus 200, right? The prices of the new good, the related good were changing from 30 or from 25 to, to 30, which means you're subtracting. 25 minus 30, okay? That is P, P2. And the good in question P1, which is the price, price one of the commodity is 25. And Q1 of the commodity, the new quantity Q, Q1, the odd quantity is 200, like that. Okay? We are fusing into this formula that I've just given you for the cross elasticity of demand. Let's calculate to find the answer. May people? The figures we are getting them in the table here. From second, first month to the second month. So the new quantity will be 250, the old quantity will be 200, the new price will be 30, the old price will be 25, okay? So let's do that. We have 50 divided by what? By five times 25 over 200. What do we find? as the cross elasticity of demand. We can say five, five into five, four. one, five into 25, five, 15 to 51, 15 to here, four. So you have what? One over four, right? Five over four. Five. Five over four. Where do you get the five? How do you get the five, sir? Because you have 50 times 25 over five times 200, okay? So you can cancel five into five, one, five into 25, five, right? 15 to 50, one, 15 to, uh, what's this, 200, Four. So you have five over what? Over four, which is basically one point what? One point what? One point two five. One point two five. And the answer is positive. And I told you that this has a meaning, okay? When the answer is greater than one and when it is positive, that has got implication. Let's go back and read the next question. What is the relationship between the two goods? If the answer is positive, what is the relationship between the two goods? Are they luxury? Uh, are they substitute goods or complementary goods? They are substitute goods. They are substitute goods. If the answer is positive, that's what I just said. And if it is negative, they are complementary goods. Question number C reads: List and explain any four factors affecting the coefficient of elasticity of demand, any four factors. And just from talking about them, you can mention them. One, pick one. Right. We talked about the availability of substitutes. What else? Even the time also. The time, the proportion of income that is spent and, uh, and the necessity of a good. Is the good a necessary good or it is just a luxury good?